Hello students, we come back for yet another chapter, the new one, unit 5, which is known as pollution. What is pollution? An undesirable and harmful change to our surroundings, to the plants, to the animals and all to the other life present on earth is known as pollution. Like the book says that on every single day, an average human being needs about 12 kgs of fresh air to survive. Thanks to coronavirus, there is no pollution at the moment. Uh, the vehicles have stopped moving around. The industries have stopped for a while. Of course, it is not good for the economy. But definitely, it has reduced pollution in the air to a really great extent. So how does pollution happen? More or less, there are many harmful human activities and yes, to a certain level, there are a lot of atmospheric changes because of which pollution happens. But we might say that 90% of the pollution that is happening on earth is happening because of harmful human activities. We'll be learning more about it in this particular chapter. What are pollutants? Pollutants are the ones which cause the pollution, which begin or is the reason for causing pollution around us. It can be noise pollution, water pollution, air pollution and so on. So what are degradable, slowly persistent? Uh, persistent pollutants and non-degradable pollutants. Degradable are usually those which slowly break down after a certain period of time and they usually dissolve in some or the other way. So for example, all the food waste that we throw, even though it's a waste, even though it causes pollution, but it still degrades itself and it slowly mixes in the soil or in the water. Uh, from for a long period of time it is present there but slowly it actually tries and degrades itself now when you're talking about the process it's fairly slow and that is why it is known as slowly persistent pollutants when you're talking about persistent pollutants it actually means those which slowly extremely slowly degrade itself so when you hear things like this is biodegradable plastic this is biodegradable uh, utensil it actually means that you can try and uh, you know you can try and dump them into a dumpster or plant them under the soil and slowly after many 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 years it will dissolve itself in the soil but that process itself is very long okay it takes many many years to do that uh, that is the reason why it is known as slowly degradable and also these persistent pollutants uh, a big example of these persistent pollutants is all the pesticides that we throw in the agricultural land and the ones that we spray and it also means all those waste that you throw including cotton including other materials the which are known as biodegradable but at the same time it takes very long it takes almost a generation for these to degrade itself or break down into smaller particles and dissolve itself in water or under the soil uh, the third one is non-degradable this is usually most of the plastic products that we are using these days uh, this is also the nuclear waste that the country is creating this is also all the metallic uh, waste that is creating this is also all those machinery that that we put in the waste stage right if there is something that has got rotten something uh, an iron uh, uh, some, some metallic things that get uh, rotten throughout the particular period of time and if we dump them somewhere those are non-degradable it not only pollutes the environment it just changes the composition of the soil or the water in which it is dumped and it creates a lot of pressure under the water to an extent that actually the pressure the air uh, the water they all change after a particular time and the effects that it has on the water and the air is so too 
the effects it has to the water and the air is to such a huge extent that it actually harms the life that is present and that thrives under that sky or in that water or on that soil. Let's learn about how pollution started. So it started really bad. We cannot just blame ourselves. We have to blame our forefathers and forefathers. So the book says that in 400 BC, there was a book that was written, which also talks about use of coal, which is actually producing smoke. And it is actually harmful for a lot of people. Now, when you are reading the newspaper these days or looking at television, you realize how many lakhs and lakhs of people, how many people die because of this particular virus that can be spread through air as well. So this is a disease and smoke is also a disease. Uh, smoke is also one of the pollutants and smoke is also one of the pollutants similarly, right? So um, there's a very nice case study of London. And it says that when industrial revolution started in the earlier 1940s and 1950s in London, <coughs> it created a lot of smoke. A lot of coal was used or uh, industrial revolution actually changed the face of earth. It actually got a lot of people employed. But at the same time, the kind of pollution that was uh, given out uh, in the air, uh, it, that the kind of pollution that was released in the air was so harmful that in just five days, there were 4,000 people that got killed because of the smoke that was released in London in one of the industries in the year 1952. So this is like so many years back, decades and decades back. And we do not need to fret that the pollution has come down to this level today that we as humans, you know, our generation or probably your generation is so much adapted to the lower quality of air. Now, like I've always said in the classroom area as well, that earth has its own way of adapting into the situation, no matter whatever kind of pollution. So imagine if human beings are creating pollution since 1940s and uh, even better, even old, even older than that, 400 BC, there has been use of coal since then. So if there are a lot of pollutants around, imagine how beautiful a human body is designed that it actually adapts to all the pollutants that are there in the air it adapts to all the pollutants that are there in the water so whatever we eat whatever we breathe whatever we drink is already polluted right what can we do from our end for it to actually slow the process or actually what can we do so that there is not much of pollution on earth what can we do so that our grandchildren do not have to suffer for that so that is what we are going to learn by the end of the chapter but uh, here i am talking about the history of air pollution if you check page number 119 i would really want you to focus on uh, that particular history of air pollution and in the next page page number 120 they're giving a very wonderful case study a very good example uh cannot say it good but yes there is good because there's a lot of learning out of it a small mistake that happened on december 2nd 1984 which created the bhopal gas tragedy uh, we all know about it it's been one of the most greatest industrial mistakes of india and the tragedy was so huge uh, the effect that it had on humans on animals the plants the soil the air just about everything that even though it happened all the way back in 84 but people are still paying for it people are uh, there are uh, babies which are born with a lot of defects there are the the air quality in bhopal is still very rough uh, the kind of water that is provided it still has those effects uh, there are so many people there were so many people who got affected. There were so many people who died because of that, because of one small little mistake. And in the year 84, they said that, uh, you know, the people who were accused for it were only sentenced for two years of jail because that was the kind of um, uh, that was the kind of punishment that was uh, given to that was the kind of punishment that was 
um, given to people because of negligence and uh, that's it just two years of jail and there are people who are still suffering because of that uh, any which ways let's move on uh, you might want to read through that case study it's interesting it's informative and it can really help you draw a very nice uh, answer when you're writing it from the examination point of view uh, what is the structure of atmosphere next point so if you remember in the very first few classes we learned about the structure of the atmosphere it is just a repetition in this particular chapter so there's something called the troposphere which has all the climatic changes it has a lot of water vapor collected which accumulates in the form of clouds and that is the reason why we see a lot of climatic changes here right uh, the sun rays reach to us uh, through the all four layers on earth and imagine even at 44 degree or 47 degree if we feel the heat um, imagine the amount of heat that is there in the thermosphere which is at the topmost layer so troposphere is about 17 to 18 kilometers from the sea level surface and 8 kilometers from both the poles and um, uh, yes so it has um the troposphere is the innermost layer to begin with there are various facts that are mentioned in the book and you might want to read through that it says that uh, you know just um, even though it's uh, even though it is 17 kilometers long from the sea level high above the sea level but it is still as thin as the skin of an apple if you chop down an apple and check how thin is the size as compared to the whole apple uh, it is similar the earth is so huge that just 17 kilometers above the sea level is just as thin as that layer of uh, or the skin of the apple yes and it still protects us from all the uv radiation uh, uv radiations from sun uh, uv radiations are from the sun is usually the reason for low immunity system it is usually the reason for all the cancerous disease right so what stops the uv rays from reaching to us it is the stratosphere that is the layer above the uh, troposphere uh, it is also uh, because of the ozone layer that uh, we are protected from all the harmful and harsh uh, rays of the sun and the harsh climatic conditions as well it is also the stratosphere where a uh, water vapor is 1000 times less than that of troposphere that is the reason why in stratosphere it is just so easy for aeroplanes to fly because no clouds or hardly any clouds right uh, moving on um, they say that it also protects us from 99% of the damage that sun can do us. Now, those people who are uh, praying the sun every day in the morning, uh, please pray to the stratosphere as well. Because whether sun is there or not, if the stratosphere is not there, we are not being able to We will not be able to survive. So, stratosphere is the one which is supposed to be prayed along with the sun. Moving on, on a lighter note, the one that uh, the next layer is that of the mesosphere, which is extremely cold, extremely cold. That is about minus 110 degrees Celsius. So to all your cousins and relatives who are there in Canada and they are experiencing minus 50 degree to all those uh, friends and family, which is there living in Siberia or parts of Russia, please tell them that you are still not there. You know, you should have lived in mesosphere and you'll understand very bad joke but come on coronavirus everybody's isolated and a little bit of funny or stupid joke might not hurt as bad as the virus does uh, moving on the mesosphere is extremely cold and the one above that that is the um, the thermosphere is extremely hot again right there are scientific reasons why this particular layer is extremely cold and that particular layer the one above it the uppermost layer is extremely hot the details are there you might want to read through that it is only for your understanding uh, but the main reason why we are learning the layers of the atmosphere is to understand that all the air pollution that is present is happening because of the climatic conditions because of the change Changes in the air and that is all happening in the troposphere only so 
uh, what causes uh, air pollution the very first kind of pollution that we are learning in this particular chapter uh, it can be 90% uh, of the times it is because of human activities like I said earlier but in those 10% times uh, it is also because of certain natural disasters yes it is because of the heat that is produced from the earth uh, magma uh, magna that we have already learned about it in the earlier chapter it is also because of the uh, uh, volcanic um, uh, it is also happening because of all the activities that happen around the active and the dormant volcanoes that are present on earth so the ash that is released in the air uh, the volcanic gases that is released in the air is also one of the causes for the really poor condition of air in that particular area, right? Um, sulfur, like we have already studied in the sulfur uh, uh, cycle, that the sulfur that is released in the air is also causing air pollution. It also causes acid rain. Uh, we also know that the nitrogen in the atmosphere is also one of the reasons for uh, really the, the impair. Um, the nitrogen in the air is also one of the reasons for the impurity of air in that particular area and apart from that all the gases that are released naturally from earth and from the uh, ocean is the reason why 10% of the air is polluted moving on 90% because of us humans we already know the coal uh, the petroleum products uh, all the, the carbon dioxide, the carbon monoxide, the carbon dioxide, the carbon monoxide, mono, the carbon dioxide, the carbon monoxide, mono, carbon monoxide, and and uh, okay. So, uh, how do these gases get produced? Uh, through human activity it is there as pollutant through natural activities as well but even from all the human activities so you already know that when wood is burnt completely or when a certain uh, coal or uh, other um, fuel is burnt completely it um, it generates carbon monoxide which is really harmful for human and it is really harmful for even the air it pollutes the air uh, nitrogen oxides or uh, other nitrogen gases harmful gases are produced when a particular fuel uh, is burnt or due to the uh, 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 due to the in, in a, it is also because of uh, the gas is also released because of a lot of industrial activities that are also happening in a lot of industries especially the packaging industry nitrogen is used to a greater extent that is where nitrogen dioxide or nitrogen oxides are released from the industries and it pollutes the particular air quality in that area apart from that uh, sulfur oxides are produced when sulfur containing fossil fuels are burned right uh, there is a very good uh, explanation on the type of particulars a nice table is given and i would really want you to read through that i'll read through a little bit of that okay sprays from certain pressurized can when you open up a can that sound is very nice and it gives you a good vibe but again it is one of the uh, aerosol or uh, the kind of um, uh, particulars that are used in that uh, is also harmful for the environment so rather than looking for a canned bottle why don't you just make a limbu pani at home and have it this is one of the ways you are not just saving your body you are also saving the environment by that okay dust smoke fumes uh, fog smoke very common in delhi these are one of the a uh, few of the reasons these are few of the reasons uh, that man made and even natural uh, so fog is very natural and smoke is man made and which creates smoke so this is also how natural and man made pollutants are creating very impure air around us to breathe in this also means the kind of gases that are released from your acs during the summer causes air pollution what can you do to save that why don't you just all sit in one particular room and use only one ac rather than using all the acs in the house 
or what you can do is use an AC for only some time during the night or during the day and try and sleep in the veranda try and sleep on the terrace it's beautiful under the stars uh, it's just magnificent to have a nice exposure to fresh air and the starry blanket right above you uh, make a list of the things that you can do to save uh, or make a list of things you can do to save the environment small little things that you can do to save the environment and uh, create less air pollution you cannot stop it completely we all know about it but what are the things that you can do from your end to lessen the effect yes so what are the effects of air pollution on humans animals plants and otherwise to begin with humans our respiratory system is built with a lot of natural mechanisms to fight with the pollution so all those people who do not have a strong mechanism or do not have a strong immunity system are usually more prone to have bronchitis are usually more prone to have asthma and other such uh, issues uh, and other such health issues uh, also there are certain respiratory problems uh, such as uh, sneezing and a, a lot of time uh, formation of mucus sneezing a lot of times uh, certain people who are exposed to a lot of heavy traffic people who travel to and fro every day to work and um, a lot of times when they face a lot of fumes that are created because of uh, the burning of uh, petroleum or the burning of uh, other fuels uh, it uh, releases a huge amount of carbon monoxide which is not good for our health so it leads to a lot of headaches it leads to a lot of dizziness it leads to uh, the, the uh, it leads to blurred vision and it also leads to uh, drowsiness uh, it leads to a, in, at a large extent if it is inhaled at, in a large extent uh, it can also cause death so carbon monoxide also causes death and it is very harmful in that way um, cigarette smoking they have mentioned here cigarette smoking also releases a lot of carbon monoxide because it is complete burning of a certain element and when uh, sig those people who have its effect on its lung and its respiratory system uh, there are other people who are also uh, exposed to uh, smokes uh, such as the cigarette smoking and they are also at uh, they are also on the side of uh, Mm. they are also exposed to carbon monoxide and they also face the consequences so what it says it's very interesting to read that carbon monoxide when it remains in your blood when it remains in your hemoglobin level it actually does not let the oxygen in the blood to work properly that is the reason why we have a lot of body problems as well that is why there is a lot of blood work needs to be done and uh, it, it the original source is carbon monoxide and the original culprit is of course smoking and its habits and also being exposed to people around who smoke a lot uh, moving on uh, sulfur dioxide also has uh, its effect on uh, human body it also leads to asthma it also leads to bronchitis and uh, to such an extent that it damages our lung tissues and it also contributes to certain chronic respiratory problems for a lifetime uh, moving on certain volatile organic compounds they have mentioned here benzene and formaldehyde and toxic particles such as lead they also lead to a lot of mutations in the body and it has its effect on the reproductive system of a human which also uh, has smaller effects such as irritation of the eyes blurriness in the eyes and uh, nose and throat infections and to a certain extent mucus formations also so apart from the climatic changes if you are facing certain uh, 
problems in your health wherein you have runny nose all the time and you have irritation of the nose or you scratch your skin all the time it is because of the air pollution that is there so you need to start moving out from that area to go to a more clear area go to an air, a place where the air is more pure as compared to the ones which is causing you the irritation uh, moving on the effect on plants we have discussed this in the earlier classes as well but it uh, the pollution actually disrupts or destroys the actual process of photosynthesis right because of that uh, the kind of uh, plants that needs to be grown or the kind of plants uh, the natural growth of the plants is disrupted it also creates smoke uh, uh, air pollution also creates smoke which when compare which when comes in contact with the fog that is or the mist that is there in the air it leaves smoke uh, in the air so in the morning time because uh, the dew is also filled up with a lot of dust it also affects the waxy layer which is there on top of the leaves uh, this waxy layer actually um, prevents a lot of water loss or a lot of transmission loss that is happening uh, from the natural uh, water that is the present in the plants in the branches and in the leaves when transpiration from the leaves is more act actually means that the leaves go green uh, the leaves go yellowish uh, instead of staying green it also means that it is prone to a lot of dust which also means there is a lot of pest on the leaves it also means that it can be affected with a lot of insecti uh, it also means that it can be affected uh, it also means it can be infected by the insects and the dust that is present in the air. Uh, it also means that uh, because of the yellowishness, it cannot actually grow to its fuller extent. So this is where greenhouse effect also comes under place. We'll learn about how greenhouse effect is helping these plants and what are we doing for the natural uh, growth of the plants. Um, but to move on, uh, let's talk about the effect of uh, air pollution on certain materials, uh, certain man-made materials. So if you have learned or if you have seen the Taj Mahal or if you have read about the Taj Mahal uh, going all yellowish, the marble going all yellow, it is because of the air pollution around Delhi. It also means that there are a lot of other historical monuments. It also means there are a lot of buildings uh, which are also getting uh, corrugated because of the air pollution in the air. Uh, it isn't just for anything that people say that, you know, even during the grandparents' time, the buildings used to stay upright and they used to stay good for many, many years. And look at now, you know, the conditions right now, uh, the buildings don't stand for more than 25 years. Uh, a lot of times it is not just the material that is used. A lot of times the culprit is also the air pollution. Okay, if your cars uh, don't look so good after a couple of years, if the color starts coming off, it is not just because of your rash behavior or because of all the soapy uh, materials that you use to clean it. It is also because of uh, the gases that is present in the air that is causing the air pollution that also chips away the color of the buildings that also chips away the color of your cars and it is uh, highly affecting the, the marble and other uh, materials that are used for uh, building commercial places so does air pollution affect the stratosphere as well apart from troposphere yes it does it does to a great extent because of all the pollution that is created because of all the pollution that is gathered the gases and the air and the impurity that is gathered in the troposphere this particular gas when it moves up slowly due to the air current to the or stratosphere it is actually affecting the ozone layer in the earlier uh, few minutes of the video we learned about how ozone layer is actually protecting us from the harmful radiations of the sun now if this particular ozone layer is affected it is actually going to harm us in return right so this is actually known as what you call as uh, the depletion of the ozone layer the destruction of the ozone layer or it is known as global warming in a very layman word.
now you all know the effects of global warming we'll touch upon that topic later on but uh, when you are trying to measure the amount of ozone layer on a particular column of air above earth so about 50 kilometers above or uh, the ozone layer lies 60 kilometers or uh, 50 to 60 kilometers above the surface of the earth so when you're measuring the earth's surface and 50 kilometers above that that entire column of air on earth which touches the ozone layer up there is known as total um, column ozone it is known as total column ozone and it is measured in dobson units or du so more of researchers and scientists use this particular term but uh, there was a group of british uh, there was a group of british researchers which were trying to measure uh, the dobson units or the ozone layer and everything and they came to know that uh, the ozone layer is greatly affected because of all the gaseous release and all the pollution that is happening on earth and how it is affecting us it affects us at a greater extent uh, apart from just the carbon dioxide uh, nitrogen dioxide apart from uh, carbon monoxide uh, there are other gases which are also not good so one of them is known as CFC uh, CFC is uh, chlorofluorocarbons and there's another one which is known as halons so halons is nothing but similar to or even uh, halons is even more uh, harmful than CFC and there is more of bromine gas that is present in halons and how do both of these affect the air so when you are using a lot of refrigerators when you are using a lot of uh, ACs when you are using a lot of other fire extinguishers as well the kind of form and the kind of gas that it releases it does not affect the humans but it affects the air quality to a greater extent so all those fire that is created it is not only creating carbon monoxide but when you are extinguishing that particular fire when you are using a fire extinguisher when you are using a particular uh, when you are trying to extinguish that fire you are also releasing halons and when you are using a lot of electronics around you you are uh, trying to expose the air with a lot of cfc which when you are using a lot of electronic goods in your home or around you it is releasing a lot of these gases are called halons and cfcs which is also disturbing the ozone layer right uh, also when you open up the cans when you open a packet of chips it is also create it also has these certain gases which is not very healthy for the air and the, uh, which is not very uh, good for the purity of the air around it does not affect humans so we do not really realize that it is affecting us indirectly it goes up in the air and it disrupts and destroys the ozone layer and comes back to us right um there is this particular uh, solution that people have found uh, over the years and researchers have come up with a greenhouse effect so we all know what greenhouse effect is right somewhere or the other we have visited greenhouses as part of picnics as part of going to the zoo and everywhere so what happens is um the radiations uh, the infrared radiations that come to earth and uh, it actually uh, you know touches the glass of the greenhouse uh, place and it uh, enters through the glass it uh, goes to the plants and uh, due to uh, a lot of uh, during the transfer of the grow uh, during the transfer and the growth and the photosynthesis like we know there is a lot of heat that gets released but that heat does not go out of that particular glass the heat the radiations and the solar energy and the sun and the everything comes in from the glass but it does not leave out right it does not leave that particular area and in that heat that particular heat um, has a lot of gases in it because of which uh, the plants can actually grow and it can actually um, okay Okay, it ensures that is there 
okay the heat that is present it also ensures the luxuriant growth of such plants and uh, there could be several adverse effect of these radiations there could be several uh, uh, you know the, the, uh, there can be a lot of destruction that happen that there is a lot of destruction that uh, the humankind has to see or has been seeing because of the global warming and because of the uh, destruction or the effects uh, uh, or the effect of pollution on the ozone layer uh of course a lot of heat means uh, the regular agriculture and the farming does not happen right um there is a downfall that we see in the agricultural industry as well uh, in the agricultural field as, as there is a lot of downfall that we see in the agriculture field as well apart from that there are certain places uh, smaller places like bangladesh and maldives if the heat uh, okay so uh, because of the heat because of the constant heat that we are getting because of global warming because of the constant heat and because of all these gases that are present in the air so if it melts the polar ice cap if you remember 2% of all the water is present in the solar ice cap and if those solar ice cap if they start melting they are only going to increase the water level in the ocean and in the water bodies and it is also going to affect all those small little countries like bangladesh like maldives like hawaii and all those small little islands which are not uh, you know ready to um, fight such uh, big floods uh you might have seen that in a lot of movies in the movie 2012 i guess uh and, and there are a lot of movies which are made on it so if there is a huge amount of fluctuation in the water if there is a huge uh, flood that uh, humankind is expecting what happens in those cases there have been a lot of flooding situations which india has also seen in the southern side of india and we already know what happens to humankind uh, during that time if you know there was a huge flood in kerala recently and there was a lot of life that gets affected so not only economy gets affected uh, not only human life gets affected but an entire area gets affected to such a huge extent that it actually moves an entire nation and there are a lot of other consequences to such natural calamities also apart from that of course if uh, the earth gets warmer and warmer day by day there are places like uh, alaska for example uh, which has sees a lot of snow so it has a frozen soil and there's a lot of methane that is present in that soil and if the methane uh, if, if that particular frozen soil melts if that particular snow melts if there is a lot of methane that is exposed out in the air imagine the kind of effects that methane has imagine the kind of effect that sulfuric acid has imagine the kind of effect that acid rain will have on uh, agriculture on plants on marine life on humans just about everything so earth will have to see uh, uh, so everybody on earth will have to say goodbye to life and uh, any which ways uh, we are all going to die one day so uh, if you want to create so quickly wrapping up air pollution what can we do what are the measures that we can take to uh, solve the problem of air pollution we cannot take away air pollution from the face of earth but what we can do is try to control uh, the kind of pollution that we are creating that we are giving out uh, number one uh, mentioned here is uh, use of a lot of cng that is compressed natural gas it also says that uh, uh, the kind of quality standards that uh, india is taking when you are supposed to have a certain travelers a uh, certain traveling vehicles needs to have a puc a uh, certain traveler vehicles needs to check on the level of uh, no2 so2 uh, your co2 that is uh, being uh, you know sent across uh, that is being exposed uh, into the air uh, they are also talking about the national air quality monitoring program which makes sure which keeps on doing a lot of research and they make sure that uh, constant monitoring of a lot of locations which are prone to a lot of such gases are uh, uh, researched and uh, 
if there is any uh, harmful situation they let the government know about it and various measures are taken against them uh, apart from that the air prevention and control of pollution act that was there in 1981 that was uh, legalized in 1981 it actually plays a lot of precautionary uh, role um, it also plays a huge role in taking precautions that a lot of air pollution is not created in 2003 there was a national auto fuel policy which was also announced which talks about the implementation of puc which also talks about the kind of uh, fuel emissions that are uh, usually seen it takes control of such situations i will see you again uh, next in the i'll see you again in the next video uh, in the meantime i want you to start reading chapter uh, number uh, i want you to start reading the chapter pollution uh, i want you to start reading in the in the meantime i want you to start reading chapter number 5 pollution from page number 118 to page number 130 uh, i'll come back again in the next video we'll be talking about water pollution in india and i would also want you to keep on uh, checking your uh, google classroom page and uh, check the notes that i am sending across uh, the uh, and also make a check with all your classmates if they have uh, made projects on uh, pollution or they have made projects on air pollution they can also send across their notes and their ppts we couldn't actually have all the presentations uh, which uh, a lot of you have already made but we'll try and meet very soon and uh, please ask them if you have any doubts if uh, you have please ask me if you have any doubts leave a comment for me in case you are having any trouble understanding any point in your google classroom post see you again in the next video